In this presentation, you will learn about Tarabai Shinde. Tarabai Shinde was born in 1850 in Berar province of Buldana. She belonged to a Maratha family. Being from a conservative society, Tarabai Shinde, just like other women of her time, were locked within the confines of the house. However, she was supported by her father, Bapuji Hari Shinde, who was a clerk in the Office of Deputy Commissioner of Revenues. He published a book titled, Hint to the Educated Natives, in 1871. Her father was very well versed with English. He knew the importance of education because he worked in the British office. He homeschooled Tarabai and taught her Marathi, English and Sanskrit. We could truly say she had linguistic skills. Along with that, she was also well versed in modern and classical literature. Tarabai Shinde challenged patriarchy once again when she got married and lived with her husband in her house following the practice of Garjavai. She decided to remain childless, which was completely against the rules set for a woman in the society. It is believed that women are complete only when they have children. Here we can see clearly how Shinde lived her life without fearing society. She not only preached about crushing down patriarchy, but she also practiced the same. Tarabai's father had a very good relationship with Mahatma Jyoti Ba Phule and Savitri Bai Phule. Tarabai started working with the Mahatma Jyoti Ba Phule towards caste eradication and gender equality. Indian society had a very rigid caste system. Tarabai challenged this caste system by educating lower caste girls. She worked with Mahatma Jyoti Ba Phule to educate girls. Apart from this, she even started working to remarry widows. She did all this by being a part of the Satya Shodak Mandal. She, along with Mahatma Jyoti Bafule, received a lot of backlashes from both men and women. The Turning Point Tarabai's life took a turning point when she read a news article published in 1881 in Pune Vaibhav, an extremely orthodox weekly newspaper. The article was written attacking a young Brahmin widow who was sentenced to execution for murdering her illegitimate son to avoid public disgrace and ostracism. Vijay Lakshmi feared the society would punish her for having an illegitimate child being a widow and therefore she decided to kill the child. Sri Purish Tulna is an essay of 40 pages published as a book in 1882. It was written as a response to an article on the Vijayalakshmi case published in the Pune Vaibhav. Sri Purush Tulna put forward a mature feminist argument which expanded the scope in which the composition of patriarchal society was analyzed. Unlike other writers, her book has the capacity to deeply impact the audience. Her words directly affected the reader's mind. Her language was considered harsh, but she had stated facts. She mentioned the hypocrisy of men, the sufferings of women, in such a way that other writers would never have. She had questions that women wouldn't dare to ask and men would never answer. Her book was a critique to upper caste patriarchy and the caste system. Since during that time, the maximum number of press owners were Brahmins, it was very difficult to get her essay published. And finally, when it was published, the book did not garner the attention it deserved. Sri Parishtulna discussed nine blames which were traditionally imposed by men for a long time, which have weakened women's position. Tarabai claimed that women have all capacities and abilities like that of men, but are suppressed by the patriarchy on purpose. She urged that people must focus on widow remarriage, eradication of child marriage, sati, etc. She believed and preached that instead of setting behavioral codes for women, the society must focus on their upliftment and eradication of evils that destroy their life. She believed that privileges enjoyed by men are a cause of degradation of women. She points out the double standards of men in various areas. Adultery. She speaks about how women are expected to surrender their body to the husband 
no matter whether he is physically handicapped a drunkard or a womanizer or how old he is she also talked about how women have no right over their bodies adultery was considered to be a grave crime in which both men and women were involved but men were forgiven while women had to face humiliation punishment and untold misery gods tarabai shinde questioned the god on the discrimination meted out to women when men and women were created there was no difference between them had god forgotten his children after creating them why was all the happiness given to men and why did women have to suffer she observed that women were severely punished for sins they committed while men were forgiven when men or women commit the same crime men are set free while women are punished religion unlike other women she spoke boldly stated her views she believed that religion was created by men as a means to control women religion was used like a tool by them to oppress women religion and cultural practices have forever oppressed women denying them their rights double standards of patriarchal system tarabai has pointed out towards the hypocrisy of how men portray themselves as the protectors of religion dharma duties and their responsibilities but in reality they themselves live a life that is gifted by the colonial powers she refers to the dressing style food travel new forms of consumption employment and education that indian men embraced so enthusiastically from boots and stockings to pigeon and liquor for supper from travel by steamship to living in colonial style bungalows she observes that indian men are in a rush to embrace british fashions that only made man a laughing stock yet many of the same men regard themselves as self appointed champions of strict religious traditions at home manusmriti manusmriti is considered as a guide to living human life and was extremely orthodox to the point that it made women's life unbearable it states that it is the nature of women to seduce men therefore men should be cautious in the company of women it clearly stated that girls are supposed to be in the custody of their father when they are children women must be under the custody of their husband when married and under the custody of a son as widows she is forbidden from asserting her independence in fact manu encourages us to see this control as reverence and protection rather than as repression and oppression women should be held responsible for every injustice hurled at them whether it is rape or molestation or acid attack the onus of the blame is transferred to her this explains why marriage came to be considered as universal and compulsory for every girl it also explains why motherhood was considered important and the getting of a son as an unwritten rule these examples clearly give us the ideas as to how problematic the scriptures were Tarabai Shinde during that time pointed out at these scriptures she tried to enlighten the people through her writings during that time manusmriti was respected just like any other religious scriptures today unlike other reformers she took up the courage to point out the orthodoxy of this text british raj tarabai shinde supported the british policy towards education and stated that women were given the gift of education by the britishers Tarabai Shinde further states that such a gift could not be expected from the male reformers from India. She believed and observed how British Raj could be a tool to counteract patriarchy. Since the British Raj was introducing reforms emphasizing on education, she believed that all these reforms would help women develop and come out of the shackles of patriarchy and live a better life. Pativrata Pati vrata is a term used in Hindu culture and traditions to refer to the duty of every married woman who is to be faithful and loyal to her husband. Pati vrata literally means a virtuous wife who has made a vow to her husband of her devotion and protection, basically placing the husband on the pedestal and treating him like a god. When speaking about this concept, Tarabai says that in order to have pati vrata, wife. men should also have virtues like god 
politics of gender Tarabai claimed that men in the colonial period accepted those reforms which had deep concern and were beneficial to men and those which would make their life easy on the other hand essential and required reforms which would impact women positively and help them to come out to the worst social conditions and enhance the opportunities for development of women were very conveniently denied by men education she emphasized on women's education argued that if women were educated they would know the extent of irreparable damage the practice of child marriage would have and wouldn't fall prey to it she stated that education would help women to stay away from crime in one of her arguments she inquired intensely that if only women had vices then why were prisons full of male criminals Tarbai Shinde's writings were not only relevant in those times but hold an important position in today's world. Using persuasive language, she described the condition of women in India. She found the privileges enjoyed by men to be cause of degradation of women. She was fierce, bold, her writings directly impacted the reader's mind. When many refused to speak on the evils of the caste system, she worked to educate the girls of lower caste. She not just preached but her actions were against patriarchy. She asked the questions that women feared to ask and men feared to answer and in doing so truly paved the way for feminism in India. I hope you now know a little more about Tarbai Shinde. Thank you for watching the presentation. Do like, subscribe, share and leave your comments about this presentation or any other topics you would like to learn more about.